Hi there YouTube, I thought I'd do a quick video on how I test my ADB devices. So I've got two ways of doing it really. The first way is to get an old Mac out, plug it all in and give it a try. Now they're a bit slow, they're a bit old, a bit clunky and I also don't have the room to have one set up full time. So the second way I found this little device. Now there are others out there but this one was relatively cheap and it's a Dracware ADB to USB. So on the one side we have a micro USB connector and on the other side we have an ADB port and it's got a little 3D printed case. Now I bought this, it was about $40 I think and uh, got it imported. And what I do is I use an Amazon Basics USB-C to micro USB cable and I plug that into my Mac of choice on the one side but I've always been told to the computer or the power should be off before you connect an ADB device quite how true that is these days or how true it was back in the day I'm not entirely sure but I'm gonna do what I've always done so I restored this keyboard recently it was very very yellowed and I took it to pieces and I cleaned it and I retrobrighted it I haven't tested it yet so what I'm going to do is there's an ADB port on this side there's also one at the top here I'm going to use this one and if we move that here I'm going to get my little 12 inch MacBook out the way. Let's uh, let's plug that in. Does it work? It does but the keyboard, the space button is a bit of a whack. Yeah. So happy with that. Power button doesn't do anything. Tab, tab works. Caps lock. Yep, all working. So that's rather cool. So let's disconnect that. It doesn't just work with keyboards. So let me move that out there for a moment. I'm going to get an Apple desktop plus mouse. Here's one I prepared earlier. This needs a bit of a clean. Let me plug none of that into there. Right way up would help. And then we plug that into the MacBook. If we can find the port. There we go. I can grab things, I can move them around. So that works really well. Now unfortunately, it would appear that this little doohickey here, it will only work with one ADB device at a time. And also, by the way, this works on Windows, it's not just a Mac thing. If I plug the mouse into the Apple keyboard too, and you can't do it without looking. There we go. And then I plug this into my laptop. You have to move that way up. Ooh, that's a bit stiff. Why is it stiff? It's not the right way up. Oh, there we go. So the mouse doesn't work anymore. I can't click on anything. And <laughs> I've got to put it in front. So the mouse works, the keyboard doesn't work any longer, so that's a bit of a shame, but it's uh, it's fine, it's a compromise, either the keyboard or the mouse, yeah. So uh, yeah, it's not just this mouse and this keyboard, I've tried this mouse 
which is another one that I retro-brighted recently and restored. That's just an Apple Desktop Bus Mouse, and this is an Apple Desktop Bus Mouse 2. So this one is a bit of a clean and a retro-bright still. And I've also tried my Apple Design keyboard as well. So this is in desperate need of a clean. If we compare the two, you'll see that this is yellowed still compared to this one. Looks much nicer. Anyway, on the back of the keyboard, there is an ADB port. Can you see that just there? Yeah. And that's where the mouse connects to. And again, when you plug both of them in, uh, only the mouse works. When you have one device plugged in, uh, that works absolutely fine. So uh, yeah, there are some other USB solutions out there, but this one was quite cheap, and also the size of it. Um, it's limited in what it can do. I'm sure the more expensive devices allow you to use multiple ADB devices at once, but uh, this, yeah, this serves its purpose quite well, and it was relatively cheap. So, and I use it quite a lot, actually. Anyway, that's been a quick video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.